Good morning, Jacksonville boating peoples. It's Brad at Yamaha Marine Center. And today, we're a little out of the ordinary because we don't get a ton of trades in. And when we do, they're normally brands we sell. But we got this beauty in. So I'm pretty excited. I don't often get to go over other brands. And when I do, they're not this new and quite this pretty. Not that I'm a huge fan of other brands all the time. But this is a, a very well-made boat. Pretty comparable to what we sell as far as construction, uh, hull, materials, uh, well-engineered boat. So it's designed for a lot of the uh, nearshore, offshore boating that we do here. And it is a dual console model, which we'll go over a little bit more and the benefits of that uh, for family use and multi-purpose use, almost like an SUV. Uh, but it is a 2020 Edgewater 262 CX. Uh, we're 26 feet, five inches overall, beam of nine foot three. Uh, they're post and draft at 21 inches, and that is boat only. So you gotta figure the shafts of the engine stick down. Maybe, I don't know, another 13 inches or so. So engines down, you're gonna be in the mid 30s as far as draft is concerned. Uh, dry weight without engines is 5,700 pounds. So a 26 foot boat, it's a pretty substantial boat because you gotta figure about another thousand pounds of engines back there and then fuel and everything. You know, we're probably pushing because uh, the tank capacity is 163 gallons. That's almost another thousand pounds of fuel. So yeah, we're pushing 8,000 pounds fully loaded. Uh, maximum horsepower is, uh, 500 so you can do 250s on this which this one is equipped with twin 200s um, cockpit depth they have listed on here at 27 inches which is nice so if you do have kids and little ones running around with you you don't have to worry about them bouncing out quite as easy um, plenty of cockpit area they're posting it at 72 square feet and they give a length on trailer which is odd of about 33 feet but that might be helpful for people who are looking at trailer but just like a lot of the brands we sell, again, being capable for offshore use, you have a nice steep entry on the front of the boat. Uh, I don't know the degrees up front, and I don't even know the posted dead rise, but I would figure it's at least 21, um, somewhere around there at the back. We'll take a look just to see if we can verify it visually. Uh, you don't have a through stem windlass, so some of the fit and finish that's on, like, say our Pursuit models, you know, Everglades has yet to keep up with or catch up to i should say but they're still using you know quality components uh some lumar uh, stainless steel anchor big thick rub rail uh, nice big uh, deck cap up here uh, like i said well constructed uh, pretty sure and somebody comment if i'm wrong but edgewater was originally created by uh the doherty family the guys that were for from everglades so the construction is pretty similar to my knowledge having like a uh, a hull and then another hull inside of it and then some foam filling in there so you get a nice uh strong structural boat and also some pretty good flotation and taking a look down the side of the boat the lines of it you know you have a decent flare uh, i would assume it's probably just about as dry as like our, our 26 pursuit which that's the previous generation 26 over there that we just sold uh, that was in our brokerage but you can see very similar boats um i don't know pursuit maybe again i'm biased it's one of the brands we sell but having a molded fiberglass windshield that's actually kind of a structural part so you don't have quite as much scaffolding working on there where edgewater kind of answered that uh, they still have aluminum around the windshield and then aluminum poles but you can see they put their supports going up this way and then the pursuits are kind of going in front of the windshield which does obstruct visibility a little bit but with the fiberglass integration you have a little bit bigger windshield than what you can put uh, with the aluminum scaffold on the edge water all in all cool looking boat though um like i said steep entry to really cut through the water and then these lifting strakes again looks well engineered that they are uh you know nice and, and flat to give a nice lifting surface and then you have a big reverse chine just like on a lot of the other brands we sell running the full length of the boat to really shed that water down and out uh, before it even hits the flare and then coming around the back of the boat one of the features i was really surprised about on this model being a 26 foot boat is having a dive door and looking at the way it's constructed you know they don't put the big huge uh aluminum on either side of this door to hide 
the engineering in the door. It looks well engineered and it looks structural. So a lot of midline manufacturers don't want to mention any names, but you can see them. They usually use the aluminum plates around here, stainless plates around here to hide their engineering. But that's also not a functional piece on their boat. So what they did is they had a hole side and they just cut a hole in it where Edgewater, Pursuit, Regulator, Whaler, Grady, the high-end people engineer this door into their hull side so they have to put more structure on both sides of the door so this doesn't become your weak point. Or some of those midline manufacturers, they go, oh, we need a door in the boat, so we're just going to cut a hole and that becomes your weak point. Um, but coming around the back of the boat, uh, you can see, uh, you know, the engines, the, the transom of the boat on Pursuits, I think, and I keep comparing it pursuit sorry about that but it's the brand i'm most familiar with and again i think they're kind of on the forefront of design and, and technology but uh you know they, you don't have a big transom platform on this boat but it is still functional where you can get around the engines if you needed to all the way to the other side of the platform uh, a lot of the hardware they're using is you know really high grade stainless really big heavy duty stuff and then the rest of the like aluminum is powder coated so it's a really nice finish on the boat and then custom painted engines this is not the yamaha paint because you see the white lowers and it's not a three-stage metallic so it is a custom painted engine uh, underwater lights and <clears throat> they're all the you know high-end sea blaze quattro and i think these are the full color spectrum and entering the boat and you can see the nice uh mooring cover keep all the weather off of it uh, we'll go ahead and get the cover pulled off and then show you the inside of the boat all right covers off you can get a nice view of the cockpit here like i said quite a bit of space i think i said 72 square feet or something a nice height to the hard top this one was not optioned with any kind of rocket launcher up there uh, but nice clean layout there is some non-skid up there too and i don't know if it's structural enough to put like a second station or a spotting tower but uh I, I would think by putting non-skid up there it kind of means you can do that i don't know again maybe somebody's more familiar with these boats and uh, can can go over that but uh kind of cool they put these uh mechanical uh raise and lower for the antenna nice little engineering touches a lot of lights in the hard top the scaffolding for the hard top looks really nice and then coming down to the entertainment center in here um corian so it looks like this is all good cutting surface and then a little insulated basin not sure what that hose is for and then a sink area so bait prep uh that kind of stuff if you are fishing would be possible over here and then you can kind of use this cutting board as uh walking the bait around so you're not dripping squid ink or blood or ladyfish guts everywhere a little cooler that slides in and out and then becomes an aft facing uh, seat over here maybe for watching lines or something and again <clears throat> the uh, engineering behind the dive door you know nice heavy duty hardware on the handle and you see these hinges but again I mean it's just it, it seems to be a pretty well engineered piece if I get the stinking latch out nice robust construction and again it's bulkhead so it's not like they just cut a hole in this thing and then uh, little inserts for the ladder right there but door is, is definitely beefy it feels like it seals well you have a magnetic catch for when the door opens over here of course you're gonna want to have the stern door closed uh, and you see the dive platform with freshwater shower uh, ladder folds down uh, another one of the touches that I like that pursuit does there's no exposed ladder up here they have the garlic ladder that comes out of the back you know either a four or six step depending on the size of the boat but you can see where the ladder plugs in there for storage and then plugs in on the uh, door itself I believe that's a raw water pickup there and then we have the fold down seat in the back, like the Pursuit, the backrest raises, so it hits you nice and high in the back, so you feel pretty secure in here. And then a live well, so it really is an SUV of a boat. I mean, most of boating is going to be compromised, and uh, these boats, I would say, are probably, you know, 75, 80% cruise, skiing, that kind of thing. And then they build enough fishability into it with rod holders 
things like that to make it fishable. But having such a large hard top, you know, as far as for casting, um, doesn't give you a ton of room, but if you're just out bottom dropping or something, it, the, the boat works really well. I mean, if you get into something big and you gotta walk the boat, you're handing a rod around, it might be a little difficult unless you got somebody driving the boat. But for entertainment purposes, this, this thing works out great and uh, has some fishability. But again, you saw that integrated ski toe. And then the mechanical space uh, has this nice storage bin in it. And then removing the storage bin, uh, you get pretty decent access for this size of a boat. Build is fairly well finished. I mean, you can see it's it, it's uh, gel coated, so there's no liner in it to make it look terribly pretty. But all the pumps and stuff are mounted nice and high up out of bilge water. You see that ground strap uh, protected by the lip up here too. So if water does start to drip over, um, you're not getting water on your pumps and things like that. Uh, I think they're fairly easy to get to. I mean, it looks like the batteries back there might be a little bit of a stretch. Bilge pump. Um, transducer through hole for the live well and raw water and then all your uh, other pumps and filters and stuff in there so pretty well thought out the decks pretty clean easy to get to everything easy to move around and then coming into the uh, bridge deck area is this seat here there's a cooler underneath here um, and then you can have an aft facing seat which is a little I mean, I don't know if you can see the angle. It's a little back, so it's probably not the most comfortable aft-facing seat, but maybe sitting sideways on it, you know, facing starboard. Um, I don't know. And then the forward-facing seat, a little bit low, uh, but, you know, in order to have this convertibility where all you have to do is pull this handle, and then the seat moves down to a full lounge, which I thought was kind of neat because then, you know, for spotting for skiers uh anything like that you can have somebody aft facing right by the helm which is a double helm <laughs> kind of cool they they favor the starboard side of the boat on uh in the bow and in the helm area you know very nice upholstery i was really impressed with that as far as the feel and stitching and everything and then the bolsters come down as well so you can you know be fully seated or standing buttons are kind of nice i don't know the name of this brand but they're all backlit well labeled easy to read and then the battery switching is digital switching which is really cool that's windless so we probably don't need that but you can see the backlighting on everything here you can tell when it's engaged and then a nice 8616 garmin and then the rest of your electronics are up here with the Fusion uh, RA70, so pretty standard. Bluetooth, uh, Sirius XM capable. Garmin, I think this is the, the 115 or maybe the 215. Yeah, 215 maybe with remote. So then you can uh, move the mic. And then uh, the Optimus EPS steering, which is all fly-by-wire and adjustable uh, steering friction. And you can adjust the turns lock-to-lock -lock based on RPM engine gauges and we'll go here into the menu and check our hours i don't have the key i'm a dummy i forgot it i'm pretty sure it was right under 100 like 96 to 97 something like that uh pretty standard 6x6 digital binnacle nice push button start stop down there and then more controls for the windlass uh, turn the power on the windlass on and then have functionality there so again the the touches on the boat are really nice uh let's look at the starboard storage or i think this might be the head yeah there you go but nice well decent access you still might have to back down in there depending how tall you are but coming into the boat there's a, a really nice access here and this is because the the helm is that kind of double wide on the starboard side it gives you a little bit more room to to maneuver but you have that nice sink in there more some more corian surfaces and then uh the head itself which looks like it's electric and has a uh, overboard discharge. So that's pretty cool. And then some of that faux teeth, the flexi teeth on the floor. And then on uh, port side, there's a latch somewhere. Here. This is just storage, but you should be able to get, I mean, wakeboards, uh, tubes, and there's a short power cord for battery charger. 
um, keeping everything up to snuff. That's the table holder up there, which is pretty bad design. You can see how the table holder leg things snap because they're plastic and the weight of that leg is pretty substantial. So we just kind of toss it on the floor there. But ton of storage, uh, pretty cool. Some innovative features. Doors are fiberglass and so not plastic. So that's a nice touch. Um, and then, you know, you can really enclose for weather protection. This is one of the features I like about these dual consoles, especially if you end up getting some canvas for the boat, which does not come with it. I think it was optional, uh, brand new, to really enclose the windshield to the hard top. So that's probably one of the biggest advantages I think Pursuit has right now. Again, having that fiberglass integrated windshield, the space is a lot smaller on the Pursuit to enclose with canvas. So it's a little bit easier. You can almost leave the canvas up all the time. And then, when the weather's nice and you want some wind, open the door with a big pass through. Um, this is kind of neat. I don't know how functional it is, but you know, this is a cushion on top of a table. So that leg plugs in to this receiver and then this table pops up there. And then you have seating kind of around the table from here in that section. So that looks like a pretty cool feature. And again, I mean, one of the high points of this boat, I think is the upholstery. Again, the feel of it is nice. Uh, the brown is a little warm when it hits the sun, but this is not a vinyl here. This is some other kind of material. I don't know what it is, but it's it's soft to the touch. Um, cup holders everywhere, and then where it may be functional, they have the Mate series, which are really cool. So this is a cup holder and a rod holder, which this one's not draining. Got to clear that drain. Uh, integrated nav lights on the deck, and again that uh, on the deck. Uh, windless so it's functional some other cool stuff they do is they give you these little fender holders so you're not using your good pop-up cleats uh, that you want to use for dock lines uh, for fender holders and then some more storage up front here the cushion on it even with the cushion that pops up nice and gives you quite a bit of storage in here lit storage um, it drains to the port side so you can see we maintain a little bit of water in it from washing it and the other touches around the boat i mean you have 12 volt outlets everywhere um really cool boat you know there's some more non-skid there for boarding from the dock so it seems to be a really well thought out product uh fit and finish is nice construction quality is is pretty superb um neat boat all around if you have any other questions or comments leave them below subscribe to the channel uh, reach out to us if we can help you out with this or any other boats on our lot. Give us a call, 904-644-7631. Ask for Brad or Barton. And as always, you can get us on our website at yamahamarinejax.com.